Have you ever looked at a beautiful, soft, freshly cut piece of bread and just thought to yourself, I'd fuck this. You are not alone. If there's one thing we know about the vast, vast sea of art available on the internet, it's that any and every piece of artwork is liable to get someone's jollies off, if you know what I mean. But we're not talking the usual fare. Inflation, Skibbity Sonic, Pregnant Bart Simpson. Because where it gets interesting is when you stumble upon art oh my God. so wacky, so uncanny in how mundane it is, that it hits you. This is the weirdest thing you've ever seen. Because this is absolutely somebody's fetish. But how do you just know? And more importantly, is there really a man out there who just gets off to art of women buying Wonder Bread at the store? On this channel, we treat art history with the seriousness it deserves. Today's lesson, how an obscure DeviantArt tier fetish experienced by only one man in all of humanity nearly ruined his life. This is the story of the DeviantArt Wonder Bread Man. The year was 2016. Harambe, Pokemon go to the polls, and a bright-eyed 24-year-old man with tons of dough and nothing to spend it on. Oh, brother! And this is kind of where the trouble begins. Merlogic, known also as Merlogic One, quietly began his commission career in 2013, though it would take several years before people online started to notice something anomalous. Rumors quickly began to percolate about a mysterious individual who would stop at nothing to commission any artist he could possibly reach to draw him two very specific things. White woman Wonder Bread art and sexy deforestation. And if you think I'm joking about that last one. Here's Johnny. Enter DeviantArt. Around March 18th, 2016, Merlogic created his DeviantArt account and soon thereafter uploaded his first commissioned work, an artwork aptly titled A Gated White Bread Community. In a prototype of his later popular commissions, this artwork features Asami from The Legend of Korra being dutifully served a white bread and mayonnaise sandwich by an enslaved winter from the show Ruby. And that was the beginning of the end for anyone with eyes. Because since that fateful post, Merlogic has spent in excess of four to five figures on dozens and dozens and dozens of similar commissioned artworks featuring evil, wealthy, malicious, thick blonde women buying surreal amounts of Wonder Bread at the grocery store. And it does have to be Wonder Bread. And bear in mind that four to five figures may be a conservative estimate. Funny Junk certainly thinks so. And as Merlogic himself somewhat confirms in our recent Discord call, the answer is nobody knows, and I don't even know, so that means no one is ever going to know, but just note that since people charge different rates and you have to calculate all those different rates, it's like an impossibly incomprehensible number. So to make, you know, fun out of it, when people say, how much money have you realistically spent? I'm like, I don't know, how much money is there in the Federal Reserve? How much gold bricks are there in Fort Knox? So sure, he spent a ton of money on it, and sure, it would probably burst into flame if permitted within 200 feet of a school zone, but how do we know, without a shadow of a doubt, that this isn't just innocent, if very weird-looking fan art? Let's quickly go over the anatomy of fetish art. So let's take a step back for a second. Try and remember a time when you were scrolling mindlessly and you came upon an illustration that contained nothing of any adult nature, yet had a bizarre focus on something that felt out of place. Not a meme, a regular, sincere drawing. Something in the back of your brain may have been signaling to you, there's something here that I don't quite understand, and it's making me uncomfortable, but what the hell is it? And that's the rub with fetish art. You know it when you see it, and you don't know why. So here are some reliable ways to tell. A bizarre emphasis on what should be an unimportant part of the scene. An outfit no normal woman would ever wear. A setting usually detached from time and space and existing for a highly singular purpose. And a scenario that in the real world would play out as deeply mentally ill behavior. And a lot of the time, there's nothing sexual in it. That's the craziest thing. And that is what makes it simultaneously so easy to spot 
and yet so hard to describe. Now, artistically, MERS commissions are nothing crazy, right? You have your basic rule of thirds composition, and occasionally you have an explanatory caption. Mer Logic prefers a semi-anime or kind of like blended Western cartoony look, though he does make exceptions for My Little Pony AI. You know you're dealing with a Mer classic if you can spot a mean, mom-coated hot blonde with Hartman hips, either in the process of mowing down a forest to make a sandwich factory, or just buying the bread herself in the store. It's all part of the fetish. Bonus points if she's loudly discussing on the phone her plans for world domination and gloating over how evil and greedy she is. My guess is that's a little bit of exhibitionism, but we'll never know. So the burning question, right? Why Wonder Bread? Why this? And how do you even figure out that you're into this? 2018, a massive year for the white woman Wonder Bread fandom and a gift to curious minds everywhere. Because as Mer Logic himself explained, this actually goes way farther back. Like we're talking like all the way into my childhood. One example I can tell you off the top of my head is when I went on the Dick show and uh, Dick asked the question, I was like, what was your first earliest memory of this? And he was shocked when I gave him the answer when I said, well, when I was watching Dexter's lab one day and I was watching the episode where Dee Dee and Dexter are forced to be in each other's rooms. Dee Dee, you know, has now full access to Dexter's lab if anybody who's at Dexter's lab knows, Dee Dee likes to break things. Dexter has these horrible nightmare sequences where Dee Dee is immediately rampaging inside his lab and just breaking things. And I'm sitting down and I'm watching Dexter, I'm watching Dee Dee in these nightmare sequences destroy Dexter's lab and I'm just, I'm enthralled with it. Like I can't look away. It's just so shamelessly evil. And you may be thinking to yourself, this is absolutely crazy. This has got to be like the only dude who's ever been into this stuff. As this funny junk Anon explains in a thread later that year, I have the same fetish as this guy, so let me try and explain. It's a power dynamic thing. Girls belittling people and being cruel is a common fetish, and that same type of behavior is often displayed in cartoons by characters destroying the environment. As for the mayo, smoking, and processed foods, that's a bit of an extension to the anti-environmentalism stuff since those are seen as unhealthy or unnatural. The idea is that the girl, with disdain for the earth or natural things, is polluting her own body with things that are unhealthy. And he goes on. In other words, this guy likes doming via white bread. But he also likes the visceral greed, right? It's not just the doming, it's the total disrespect for the environment and the absolutely irrational consuming desire to take anything good and wholesome and natural and corrupt it into something corporate and bland. It's somewhere between a doming thing and a corruption thing, and it seems that the bread is just where his mind landed. One thing that Murlogic makes an effort to cite is the fact that Dr. Blight from Captain Planet perfectly encapsulates this mentality. It dawned on me, it's like, is Captain Planet the only instance where they had one villain who is a female who hates the environment? And Don and me, it's like, why am I not commissioning this right now? And that's the story of how all these evil women came to be. She's an utter simplification of the concept of greed in a package that a child can understand. And clearly, something about this had quite the impact on him. Not to mention the one sequence where she becomes giant, but I feel like that doesn't factor in here, but if you know, you know. But no discussion of Merlogic could ever be complete without addressing the controversy. Shadman. I promise this is relevant. For those who don't know, Shadman is a deeply controversial artist whose claim to fame can best be summed up as drawing hentai of his mother, of real people's children, and occasionally Teen Titans in Overwatch. While the Shad lore is extensive and disgusting and frankly deserving of its own video, suffice to say that this is an artist who's been around the block in terms of drawing objectionable content. But what goes up must come down. And though 2018 was a great year for the Wonder Bread art world, it wasn't without its major drawbacks. Sometime that year, Merlogic contacted Shadman hoping for a commission. Notably, Merlogic claims that at this time he was not aware of Shadman's reputation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Before I even got to that point, you know, I'm just a little young Mer going around asking people for uh, different commissions. I don't do background checks on any of the characters that I, you know, ask for commissions because, you so know. So let me stop you right there. One, one quick thing. I'm just curious how that's the case because Shadman is the type of guy where his reputation absolutely precedes him. And it's, I would find it very difficult to approach him for art, not knowing anything about him, you know? Look, 
I know it sounds unbelievable, but I truly do believe that I am the commission equivalent of Forrest Gump, where I just run into people and I just ask them stuff and then one thing leads to the other. And somehow, despite being denied a commission request by a borderline world famous internet pedophile, it was only downhill from there. And as more and more people became familiar with Merlogic's antics, he ceased to be an actual human being and started to embody this avatar of utter DeviantArt degeneracy. And it was kind of obscurity ever since. So where is Merlogic in current year? In researching this video, I have come across no fewer than 127 unique Merlogic commissions. And those were only the ones that I could find by crawling Google images. The legacy lives on. Merlogic is still very active online and he often receives free Underbred art through Twitter, where he has also made extensive use of the reply feature whenever he sees an artwork or a character that he deems mer coded. And there is mer coded lore, but frankly, I covered all the prerequisites, so like, you know it when you see it. While it seems that Wonderbread Fetish Art outlived its peak popularity some years ago, it is not gone by any stretch of the imagination. And while DeviantArt is obviously past its prime, you must remember that DeviantArt did for weird fetish art what Fire did for the human race. And that's worth admiring. And with the advent of AI, the coom is seemingly endless. One can only hope that unlike weird art drama of years past, this new generation of Wonderbread art will continue to live on without controversy and not go stale. This guy stinks! This has been a lesson in art history.